Hey everyone, this is Gregor again. Um, I'm doing my help desk show here, talking about GitHub, automation, the Octokit, JavaScript SDK for all things GitHub platform APIs. And today I'll be talking about dependency updates and the noise it creates in tons of my repositories specifically about log files. So I do use log files in my Arctocade repositories and most of my open source projects, mostly because of the benefits of faster CI. The installs are just much, much faster. And there are a lot of disadvantages. Using log files, like you are stuck with the entire dependency tree that is defined in the log file. And it's possible that one of your dependencies or sub-dependencies broke your own library and you don't even know because of the log file. Without a log file, every npm install would get you the latest version of everything and you would run, um, like the problem would surface much faster. So what Renovate does, Renovate is the application that I use for automated dependency updates for Octokit. And it also offers a configuration to do um, weekly maintenance log file updates. So I think I have defined it in the .github repository. Here is a Renovate JSON. And this is basically the setting that I have. And that means um, that by default, once per week, um, I get automated pull requests that update the log files. And this is the time when I see uh, one of my dependencies or sub-dependencies broke my libraries, which tends to happen every now and then. Now, the problem is I get hundreds of these pull requests and it's so much that I even wrote a script to just go ahead and merge them automatically. Um, but it's still creating a lot of noise. So in this episode and probably it will turn into more than one, I want to see how I can disable this log file maintenance from Renovate and instead do my own thing and update maintenance uh, the log files silently without using any pull requests in the backend. Um, so yeah, what is the problem here? I want to start out by explaining why this is not working. Um, Renovate does not only provide a configuration to enable it, but it also provides this auto merge true configuration. Um, but the problem is that it cannot just create a branch, wait for the CI to pass and then silently merge if the head branch is protected. And of course, all of the Octokit repositories utilize branch protections because it's open source and have to make sure that we don't accidentally merge stuff that, for example, doesn't have um, all the tests passing on it. So I just cannot use it. I'm sure it's uh, documented here somewhere when I look for protection. Yeah. If you have enabled branch protection, which prevents Renovate from auto-merging directly to the base branch, then this won't work and you should stick with the default PR-based auto-merging instead. So that summarizes exactly the problem that we are having. Okay. I forgot to say hi. We are now live on Twitch Gregor Codes. I hope I get this right. Yep, 
that's me. Okay. So yeah, welcome everyone who is watching now or later. I will go through my outline. And also here I did the tweets, I did the comment, and I will upload the recording later. So what is the problem? Why can't I just permit um, renovate to merge a branch? And a lot of stuff has changed. So I just want to confirm that this is still the case. So I have this silent log file update repository here that I will now um, check out locally. Let's see. Oops, let's make this big. Okay. Get the clone. npm init and then I will install octokit and probably dot env as well and while doing that I will register a new application setting apps new and I will just silent log file update and just set this it's home page I don't care about that stuff I don't care about webhooks I do care about access to contents because that's what we need and I think that is all only on my account that's correct let me install the app now on my new repository there we go so the app is now installed and then Let's open it up in VS Code. Make this bigger too. Okay, I will need a .env file to set the app ID and uh, get the ignore file to ignore .env and maybe also .node modules. And then I will need to define the private key. So let's generate one. Okay. And now let's just create an index JS. Let's turn this into a module and import octokit and import dot env and then call dot env config. Uh, Okay. Oh, actually, I need app this time. So app, new app, and then private keys, process in the private key, and app ID. Okay, do I need anything else? No, that's enough. Let's see if it works. Await app octokit request get app the console log 
data. Okay, let's give this some more space. No start line. Huh. Maybe I have to make a string out of this? What's going on here? Oh yeah, that was it. So silent log file update. That's the application that I just created. And it works. So I can authenticate as the app. Um, then I have to, let's call this app info, and we can just leave it as authenticated as app info name or slot. Okay, and then I go through each repository because this is installed on a single repository anyway, so that's fine. And in here, I will do an async callback and I will get an Octokit instance and also a repository. Okay. Uh, sending requests to repository full name. So when I run this, then I should see two logs authenticated and now sending requests to the repository that I just installed. Okay, let's create a file. Uh, Octokit rest repos create or no. Let's why is this completely covering up my... Create... Create or update file contents. Okay, so owner is repository, owner login, repo is repository name path is let's say just test plus a random string and then content buffer from to string base 64 Let's use that here, random name as a txt file. And then I want to create a branch. Okay. Const data. Let's see. Created and I think I have random name and then HTML URL. Okay. 
So basically I authenticate as my new app and I create a new file in the new branch and that failed. Message wasn't supplied. Okay. That should have been required. Okay, well, this is not TypeScript. I could add TS check. Um, creating test file. Let's try this again. Oh, I have to create a branch first. Interesting. So wait, octokit, rest, repos, create. Oh, how do I create a branch? Create reference. So I will need these two things and then I need to pass SHA which should be repository I think repository has like it I think I can use top branch the, the branch name as a SHA. Let's see if they will work. And then the ref, I'm not sure the format of it, but I think it's... Probably refs, branches, and then my random name. But yeah, let me make sure. So we have res reference Git data, just git. Okay, create a reference. Refs hats master. Okay, so it's refs hats. Branch created. Okay. So we create our random branch and then create a file in the random branch. Okay, only four supply. What? Which request is done? Okay, so we do require the full SHA. So which property is it? That is so unhelpful. Repos silent log file update. So this is the value we want. I wonder if it's in here. It's not. I didn't know that. I thought we would get the SHA. Okay, what do you need here? Let me look up how I did this before. I did create a plugin to create a pull request. So this is how I do it. 
I need the last commit. Well, I guess I just do that then. There must be a simpler way, but you know, I'm just messing around here. So and then base can most likely be repository default branch let's just see if that works cool so you can see I can just mix the REST API methods with requests, doesn't matter. Um, probably this is something like list commits, octokit, rest, repos, list commits, and it will work the exact same way. Okay. So now we have three branches with these test branches. Okay. And now what I want is branch protection to simulate the problem. So four main require pull requests before merging. And that should enough I probably should add some kind of simple CI to simulate that as well you know what I will just do that now Complaining about the top level away, but that is supported with the latest Node.js. So let me create GitHub workflows test and then just get some random test YAML here and make it much simpler. So let's run it on the main branch. You know what, let's just run it on every branch. Not on pull requests, I don't care. Or, you know, whatever. Um, and then I don't need any of this. Just to run. Echo, okay. Create branch and new file. Push. Now I heard I can watch my actions happening? That doesn't seem to be the case. Okay, so here is my GitHub action workflow that just ran successfully. So now I should be able to select it. Let's reload the page. this okay and save oh 
Okay, so I have my branch protection. And if I remember correctly, my app should now not be able to just merge it silently. So, but first, let's run it again. What should happen now is... Oh, interesting. So it runs it twice because the branch was created and then the file. Okay, so now let's attempt to merge it. So await octkit rest repose. And then there's, I think, oh, there's a merge. That sounds like what we need. Head is the default branch. Base is random name. What else do we need? Okay, optionally a commit message, but I think it defaults to something if we don't set it. Well, let's see what we get from this. New file. And this is merge. Console log merge. Commit. There's no HTML URL here. So you know what? We just lock out branch merged and leave out all this stuff and see if it works. Huh? Why is it able to do that? Interesting. Oh, no, hold on, <laughs> let me see what's going on here. Did I just merge it the wrong way around? Also, let me change the avatar for this app. Because it's confusing me that it has my own avatar. Somewhere I have a provat. There we go. Let's just use that. That's good enough. So here it merged main into this branch. So that's one of my favorite things to do. I mix up base and head. <laughs> 
interesting that it's taking so long. I think there is an error code that retry. Yep, here. So OctoKit, the OctoKit package automatically has the retry plugin installed. So for four or nines, it just tries it again because sometimes four or nines resolve themselves. In this case, we don't really want to do the retry, but whatever. Um, what is the error that we are getting? Protected branch main check failed. Okay. So that's interesting. The check failed. So what I want to do now is just do the merge. Comment out all this stuff and set random name to this existing branch. We can make sure yep, this is the branch we want and all checks now pass. So I want to see if we still get the error even if the branch protection is happy. Okay, at least one approving review is required. So, and this is the problem because there is no branch, there is no pull request, I mean. So, there are no reviews. So, this will never work. And this is exactly the problem I run into with um, Renovate. Now, let me try something. Uh, actually, let's just comment out this whole thing as well. And here I do get my own Octokit and authenticate as myself. So this is the GRM, GR2M Octokit now. So I do Octokit of process in the GitHub token, which is a global environment variable I have locally on my machine. So this is now authenticated as myself. And I want to see if when authenticating as myself, if it will work. Oh, random name. This is the head. Wait, what is going on? Oh, okay. I just defined it twice. That was stupid. Yep. So I can work around it by authenticating as myself. Now with Renovate, you know, if you guys folks, sorry, if your folks are listening, I think that would be a way to work around the problem. I think you could use GitHub's OAuth flow uh, for GitHub apps and use that token. So you could provide an OAuth flow and store one of my token, which would be scoped to only the repositories and then use that for token for the auto merging. We have actually a way to double check my hypothesis here. Because I recently created this project, create user to server token, where I now need to define 
client ID and client secret. So let's do that. Let me just close some tabs here. Here we go. So this is all just a test app. So I don't mind you seeing these credentials. Usually for like live production app, I would not show them to you. So create user to server token Netlify that app. You can quickly create these tokens for your app. Also, you might want to disable token expiration if you want to set a token and want them to work for longer than eight hours. Otherwise, you need to refresh um, your OAuth tokens using a second refresh token, which is valid for six months. Okay, but I just disabled it and if everything goes well, okay, it didn't configure callback URL. So I think I can, this is the callback URL and I think I can basically say, I set it to just example.com. I think, well, we shall see. Oh, okay. No, that will not work. So I need to set it to, I think it's login HTML. All right. There we go. I just want to make sure 260 260 yeah this is the right app so now instead of using a personal access token which is global i will use this token which you can only use to authenticate against this one repository let me see if this works now and for that i need to just grab another branch which is still open like this one which hasn't been merged yet oh no this is one is already merged You know what, just to be sure, I will just run the whole thing. But instead of merging as the app, I'll be merging as the user. And let's see if that works. Head on. Oh, stupid me. <laughs> okay, let's try again. Yep, so that works. That's actually pretty cool. Um, so that's a flow that Renovate and others could use that would need to persist OAuth tokens, but it's probably a better workaround than not making it possible at all. But I will not wait for uh, renovate to implement it. I'll just mess around with it myself. So I did showcase the problem now. Now I kind of showed the solution as well using a personal access token. So this is what I will do now but using GitHub Actions. You have to understand GitHub Actions um, provide the GitHub token secret by default, 
but it's just an installation access token and it will run into the exact same limitation like it will fail because the github actions app the internal github actions app is not permitted to just bypass branch protection only admins are permitted to do that so we will need a personal access token to make this possible What I want as well, though, is I want to enforce the rules for admins too. And I'm not sure if this will even work. Uh, sorry, I'm the wrong repository now. So. Because the problem is right now I basically merge a branch before the CI passed and I do not want that and I'm not sure if there's a way around it though so let's just try and see if it now fails It's already failing. Actually, let me see how I can disable the retries per request. There's the plugin retry, and I know that there are some. Here. Okay, so at least one review is required. Now I wonder, can I add a review to a commit without it having a pull request? Maybe. Let's see. Because that would solve my problems. Now let's just review protection. A uh, branch protection, I mean, pulse. Create a review for a pull request. So unfortunately, it's not possible. We need a pull request and we do not want a pull request. Because this will create all the noise that we try to avoid. So we solved part of the problem, but not all of it. If the branch protection rules are enforced for admins, the whole thing will not work. So let me just close a few more things here. So for my purpose, I will just disable, this is the wrong repository. I will just disable the branch protection for admins. So I will have to add a disclaimer here. Ideally, what I would have wanted is to just add a review to the commit. So all the checks pass and then I can go ahead 
and merge it. And because the commit is not from me, I thought I'm, this might be possible, but I cannot create a review um, without a pull request. So this is not an option. So I will just disable the enforcement for admins. And now we are good. All right. So this was our little test script to reproduce the problem and we've proven that it works. So that is fine. With either a user to server token or a global personal access token. That is actually much better to use a user to server token because it's um, scoped to only have access to this repository. Like here, I have a personal access token, but actually I think I will do like a user to server token and probably will use that over the global path personal access token. All right, so next, I want to create a workflow. So two separate things. One is basically create the log file update. And um, if there is a change, push it. as a branch. So that's one problem we will need to solve. And I think that the log file update cannot be created virtually. I am not sure. I would have to look that up. So for now, I just do update log file YAML. And let's just start out with this file, call it update log file. And then I will want to run on the schedule. And I want it to run probably every day or every night. So let's do cron guru every every day at noon. Okay. That doesn't seem to be matching. <laughs> um so in my help desk Actually, what I most recently added it was to launch AS. I have a workflows file and it runs on a crow job every day at 4 a.m. Pacific time. So I will just use that. And then I will also use a workflow dispatch so I can trigger it manually. And then uses actions checkout v2 and set up node v2 with node version, current LTS version. Then to update the log file. I will package 
that's a file name, right? I'm blanking right now. Yeah. And node modules and then run a fresh npm install. And after that, I want to check if there is a local change. And if it is, I wanted to push it to a package log file branch name. Check if there is a file change because I don't know how I do that right now. And then I basically do a git commit and now I have to look up again what I need to do that because there are several commands I need to do to make this possible. So I need to configure user email and then package log stat. Okay, can do get status here. And then first I wanna check out a branch if it exists. And I think that's something I'm doing in OctoKit OpenAPI, for example. And all the update workflows that I have, if I recall correctly. No, not here. Oops. Octokit.js. Let me see. Oh. Like here, for example, this is the one I was looking for. Okay. So basically, check out the branch update log file if it already exists. Otherwise, create it. I'm not sure, maybe there is a smarter way to do this but I think that would work and that should be fine I mean worst case this will just fail but who cares for now probably shouldn't hard code my token here. Need to authenticate as a repository 
admin. Make it more clear. Okay. Merge branch as repository admin instead of as the app. CA update log file. Okay, let's push that. And go to my new repository update log file and let's just run it using the workflow dispatch trigger and see what will happen So this is exactly what I was expecting. So I only want to run it if there is a change. So I don't know what the most elegant way to do that is, but I think I can just do this. Face silently. install a dependency you can simplify this a little bit here okay let's just install an earlier version of Octokit. Okay. Downgrade Octokit and push it. And now I think our update log file action should actually do its thing and update the log file because there is a new version of Octokit with just within the range. I don't think okay that didn't work um, Push branch if it does not exist. All right, so it's been an hour 
already, so I think I will stop here for now. That was the wrong action. Update log file. Oh, that seemed to have worked better. So now there is an update log file commit here, which updates the log file. Here it is, so it updates Arcticket 104, 105, so that is good. So what will the next steps be? I want to For one, I want to make sure that CI is triggered by this push and it's currently not because it's authenticated as the GitHub action and I wanted to authenticate as myself using my personal access token. Then I want to wait until all the checks completed and only then run a workflow which merges this branch into the main branch if all CI pass or if there's any CI that failed I wanted to create an issue and bring it to my attention then in this latest update of the log file um, my CI failed and it's probably something I want to look into. All right, so that's probably what I will do next week on Thursday at the same time. On Monday, um, I didn't yet put it in my upcoming shows. I will continue to automate the help desk repository itself and I will unfortunately do another episode on scheduled tweets because I didn't finish in the last episode and I need to look into just build it from scratch because there is no Twitter SDK for JavaScript that can do what I need it to do. So that will be on Monday at noon Pacific time and on Thursday again at 1 p.m. I will continue on the silent log file updates. Thanks so much for watching.